Every once in a while, a player sticks around for so long that people lose track of how lethal he was in his prime. There are many examples of players who fit that description, like Vince Carter and Dwight Howard. But my favorite example of that is none other than Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk was a 7 foot power forward slash center who played 21 years of his career faithfully for the Mavericks. He was also a 14 time all-star and made 12 all NBA teams. He's currently 6th on the all time scoring list with 31,560 points. Everybody knows that Dirk is an all timer and a future hall of famer, but the area I want to focus on in this video is the prime of his career, because Dirk was truly something else during that time, and people are either too quick to forget or too young to fully understand his impact during that time. So let's evaluate his greatness by taking it back to the beginning of his career up through his prime days. Dirk was drafted in 1998 with the ninth overall pick by the Milwaukee Bucks before they ended up trading him to the Dallas Mavericks for the big man, Robert Tractor Trailer, and what was possibly the most regrettable decision in Bucks history. But it didn't look that way initially since Dirk's career got off to a very slow start. The 98-99 season was a lockout shortened year that only had 50 regular season games. Dirk was only 20 years old and was having a difficult time adjusting to the style of American basketball. A skinny, lengthy, perimeter big man wasn't something that was common in the late 90s, and the physicality was taking its toll on him. Fans were even sarcastically calling him Irk Nowitzki due to the lack of D in his game. In only 20 minutes a game, Dirk averaged 8.2 points and 3.4 rebounds on just 40% shooting. It was also a very forgettable season for the Mavericks as a whole as the team missed the playoffs and finished with a 19-31 record. It was so difficult on Dirk that he even said he considered leaving the NBA and heading back to Germany to play out his basketball career over there. Fortunately for us all, he didn't end up doing that. Several changes were made for his sophomore season. For one, Mark Cuban purchased the team. Dirk credited Cuban for changing the team's atmosphere into a winning culture. Under Don Nelson's coaching and with another year of development, Nowitzki significantly improved his play and all of his numbers, averaging 17.5 points, 6.5 rebounds, and 2.5 assists on 46% shooting, which was good enough to finish as the runner-up for the Most Improved Player Award. They didn't make the playoffs this season either, but the following year is when their winning days would begin. From the 2001 to 2010-2011 season, the Mavericks had over 50 wins each year with Dirk leading the way. Over this 10-year stretch, he averaged 24.3 points, 8.8 .8 rebounds, and 2.8 assists on 48% shooting, 38.5% from 3, and 88% from the free throw line. This is a point I want to take a moment to emphasize, is this man's uniqueness and efficiency. During this era of basketball, the game was dominated by bruising back-to-the-basket big men like Shaquille O'Neal, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, Chris Webber, and Amari Stoudemire. And then there was Dirk Nowitzki, who dominated with finesse, fadeaways, and efficient shooting from distance. During Dirk's prime, the league was shooting less than half the amount of three-pointers they're shooting today, and yet still he stood out in that era with that style. The truth is, the man was so ahead of his time that he shouldn't have been as good as he was, given the era he played in. A player like Dirk Nowitzki is made for today's game, and there's no question in my mind that he would have an absolute feast in this current era. Speaking of efficiency, his most efficient season of his career was the 2006-2007 season, where he averaged 24.6 points, 8.9 rebounds, and 3.4 assists on 50.2% from the field, 41.6% from three, and 90.4% from the free throw line. That's a historic 50-40-90 season. In the history of the NBA, only eight players have ever made the 50-40-90 club. Dirk is the only seven footer to ever do it. When you factor in his size, his sharpshooting abilities, and his signature fadeaway, you can begin to see how a prime Dirk Nowitzki was one of the most indefensible players of all time. There were so many occasions where he was going to score and there was absolutely nothing the defender could do about it. It was that 50-40-90 season where his Mavericks won a franchise record 67 games and he was named the league's MVP. Now this is where some of Dirk's prime years get a little bit tricky. As we mentioned, the Mavericks won a lot of games during that era and were often going to the Western Conference playoffs as a high-seeded team. 
Yet despite that, the Mavericks often came up short in the playoffs. An often forgotten aspect of Dirk's legacy is that before the 2011 NBA Finals, the NBA community by and large viewed Dirk as a player who was an underperformer in the postseason. Some would even go as far as saying he was a choker. I don't think I would go that far, but there is some merit to it. In the 2006 NBA Finals, the Mavericks had a 2-0 lead in the series over the Miami Heat and then lost the next four straight. Some people believe that had more to do with the refs than Dirk and the Mavericks, but I digress. In the following year, Dirk's MVP season where they won 67 games, they were upset in the first round by a seemingly less talented Golden State Warriors team. This was an MVP-led Dallas Mavericks team that had just won a franchise record 67 games and was the top seed in the conference, losing in the first round to an eighth seeded team in six games. And then in the next three years after that, his Mavericks lost in the first or second round despite being a 50 plus win team each year. These were significantly huge blows to the legacy of Dirk Nowitzki, but we all know how he redeemed himself. The famous 2011 NBA Finals, where Dirk's Mavericks upset the Super Team Miami Heat of LeBron, Wade, and Bosch. I don't think there was ever a time in NBA history where one series mattered more to one player's legacy than the 2011 Finals mattered to Dirk's legacy. He showed up big, dropped his 26 points per game and 9.7 rebounds per game while securing the Finals MVP. But if he hadn't pulled that off, well then people would still remember him as a great player who couldn't get it done in the postseason. Fortunately, he did win in the Finals and his legacy was saved. With all of this being said, I personally think it's pretty remarkable that he even won a championship. Just about the entirety of his career, he was lacking superstar help. He had Steve Nash early in his career, but at that point, Nash was not the player he would be in Phoenix. Who else did he have? Michael Finley? Jason Terry? Tyson Chandler? Josh Howard? An old Jason Kidd? He was basically never a part of a trio or even a duo that you would expect to win championships. If you think about many of the great players who played in that era, many of them were much more fortunate with the co-stars they got to play with. Kobe had said that for the longest time he had tried to recruit Dirk to play with him on the Lakers. Imagine if that had happened. How much winning do you think Dirk would have done then? But Dirk had always turned him down, because he never wanted to leave his Mavericks. And honestly, that's what makes Dirk so special. He could have won more elsewhere, he could have been a part of a super team, but instead he was loyal and played 21 years for the same franchise, which is the most seasons in NBA history for a player to play with only one team. He wasn't the quickest, he wasn't the strongest, and he wasn't the greatest defensive player. But the truth is, Dirk was a loyal legend who wasn't expected to win a championship, and given his circumstances, he probably shouldn't have, but he did. And that's much more than many legends can say. He wasn't the greatest ever at his position, he wasn't an all-time great two-way player, but he was an all-time great from an efficiency standpoint, and he was one of the hardest players to guard the NBA has ever seen. He was also one of a kind, and he did it his way. I said it once and I'll say it again. The way he played his game, there is absolutely zero question in my mind that he would torch today's league. Let me know in the comments section how good Dirk Nowitzki was in your own words. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.